Hello, it's Reya and welcome to my summer haul, world con haul, anyway, haul video. This is basically all of the books I've bought during my trip to Dublin and uh, books that I've gotten from the freebie tables and uh, also like books that I've received as gifts and also I did go into a little bit of a post world gone blue so I ended up buying some books when I got back home as well. Um, before I get started with the books however I will be quickly talking about all of the knickknacks and yarn I got during the convention and during the week and yeah let's just get started. <laughs> So first up I want to talk about all of the art prints and different kinds of like creators items that I got during Worldcon. I am a huge advocate for supporting indie artists and supporting creative arts and crafts. I loved the selection that there was in the dealer's room and I bought so much stuff. Uh, basically Whenever I get, go into an artist alley, I go crazy and I buy all of the art prints. This year, uh, Sana Takeda and Afua Richardson were, were the featured guest artists at Worldcon, so I bought both of their prints. I bought stuff from John Picasso, I bought stuff from the independent artists at the booths, and uh, I bought stickers for my bullet journal, and it was a lovely time. I will leave all of the artists and creators linked down in the description so you can check them all out. I'm not going to go too in much into detail of what I bought. Um, I am, however, going to talk about my two favorite items that I got from Worldcon. This little bean is Pomona. Look at her. She's so adorable. She has like a little buck tooth and I, I love her. She's a mandrake and I named her after uh, Professor Sprout from Harry Potter. Brie came up with that name, so I'm really thankful for Brie as well. And the moment I saw that there was this, uh, there was this artist selling these, I was like, I need one. I need one so bad. And I feel like the metal of how much you like a thing can be settled in like how much you keep touching it and how much you keep wanting to look at it and stuff and I've been like obsessing over this and just picking it up and staring at it and it, it's been on my table and now it's on my shelves and I just love it so much. The next thing that I got is my very own magic wand. Now, there was this guy selling this uh, at the con and uh, what I liked about his stuff is that uh, he designs these himself. He doesn't do replicas from the movie designs. And I've always been like, sure, I want a wand because, you know, it's like you can point and stuff and do all. So like it's it's relaxing. Like I like the heft and stuff. But he doesn't, he didn't do like movie replicas. And I've always been like, well, if I want to cosplay a witch or if I want to be a witch from that universe, I want to be myself. And shouldn't I have my own wand? And uh, this just kept calling to me and I bought it. And then uh, the creator said that this is a walnut uh, wand with a phoenix feather core. And I was like, a phoenix feather? That's a bird! I like birds! So yeah, I ended up picking this up and it's amazing. Oh, before I get into the books, I will show you all the yarn I got. I got a lot. Um, just going very quickly, because we went yarn shopping with the Stitch and Bitch crew, so I got these two at the Constant Knitter. I'm thinking of using these as sort of embellishing colors for a skirt that I'm going to crochet. This is all that Baba Yaga Moomin Witch realness that I'm going for. And then I got these 
um, mint ones at This Is Knit and uh, this is the color Underworld and this is or these are the color Underworld and this is Micromanage and I'm like there is a subtle difference between them and I'm thinking of making sort of like really long like sleeves dragon scale leaves out of these and also using this yarn which is a UV uh, thread like this rainbow colored like UV uh, light that I got from third world yarns this is the color it's the eyes and I'm thinking of using this with the mint color thread to make my dragon scale gloves hopefully I will have them ready for next year's con you know and the very last thing I got was this very luxurious soft uh, uh, yarn from Third, Wa Third World Yarns as well, and it's mycelium. Very purple, very fun, and yeah, these are all of the yarns I got. And just by looking at them you can see what color schemes I really enjoy and love. Okay, let's get to the books. Okay, so books. First up I want to talk about the freebies and gifts I got. Uh, this is an art copy of Foundry Side. They were handing these out for free at the freebie table. And uh, I have wanted to read Foundry Side for a long time, but it ha always has holds at the library. And uh, I feel like it's such a big book that... I can't read it in a month, so, you know, when I saw that they had, like, these art copies to take for free, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm taking one, and now I can just read it at my, like, own pace. And if I like it enough to want to buy a finished copy, I can do that and then use this uh, art copy for, like, craft paper material and such. So, yeah, that's the first one. The next items I got was this uh, Intelligence, Artificial and Human Eight Science Fiction Tales by Japanese authors. This was at the Harukon uh, booth. Uh, there was this uh, Japanese fandom booth there uh, advertising their future convention, Harukon. And this has stories, by, one story by Taiyo Fuji, for example. And uh, it's very short and it was for free. And I was like, yes, well, I... I'm an advocate for translated fiction, so I definitely wanted to give it a try, and I took it. Then I got this sample from uh, The Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This was on the Golan's table, and uh, I have this weird feeling with Ninth House. Like, I'm, intri I'm intrigued by it, I'm interested in it, but at the same time, am I interested in it because of the hype? Or am I interested in it because I actually want to read it? So I think that's why samplers are a good thing, because then I can just dip my toes in it and see if I like the writing style, and if not, I will just ignore the thing when it comes up. And then the final freebie was the entire series of Card Capture Sakura by Clamp. Ooh. These I got from Shannon from That's So Poe. Uh, she was going to unhaul uh, the series and she asked if any of us in our group would want them. And I was like, hey, uh, if they're Japanese, like, do they have furigana so that it's easier for me to read them? And she said yes. And I was like, okay, I'll take them because I believe that it's so much easier to... Um, I think it's so much easier to refresh your language skills if you pick up a book that you've already read, but you pick it up in the language that you're trying to fresh up in. And since it has Furigana, it's easier for both me and my partner to read it. So, yeah. And I've already read it in the past, so um, I'm looking forward to uh, picking it up and seeing how how it fares. I know there's some uh, pretty uh, problematic elements in that series. But also, it has beautiful magical girl dresses, so, you know, I love beautiful magical girl dresses. 
And then uh, from card capture Sakura, it's easy to segue into some comics that I bought. Uh, this is the tenth volume of Blue Exorcist by Kazue Kato. I already had the nine volumes at home, and I saw this at Chapters when I went there uh, to look at some books, and it was only like three euros, and I was like, yoink, uh, because, you know, manga is pretty expensive, so when you see a volume of a series that you are collecting for three euros, you pick that sucker up, and so I did. And it's just a continuation of a series that I've been loving. Then, from Hodges and Figgis, I got these two collections of Junji Ito, uh, Frankenstein and Smashed. These are both uh, short story collections by Junji Ito. I love Junji Ito's work. Uh, he does, like, body horror, uh, classic horror, like, screamer queen type of stuff. And they're super weird and interesting and borderline on sort of, like, science fiction-y horror at times, and uh, these were like 10 euros cheaper than they are in Finland. Uh, in Finland, these part covers go for like 29 to 32, depending on where you buy them, and in Hodges and Figgis, they were 20 euros. So I was like, yeah, I, I need to buy them because, you know, cheap. So I did, and I love these hardcover editions. They're like super sturdy, and the Print quality is amazing, and yeah, can't wait to read this. Then from Forbidden Planet, I got Motor Crush Volume 1 and 2. I have already read them, I really enjoyed them, and I love uh, the art that Babstar does. So when I saw that these were uh, on the shelf at Forbidden Planet and they weren't super expensive, I decided to just go for it and pick up my own volumes. Then from the winding stair, I got this beautiful picture book. Uh, this is a biography of Mary Shelley, and it's Marianne Frankenstein uh, by Linda Bailey and Julia Sarda. And it looks so amazing, and it's got like debossed details in it, and the art is like super pretty, and it's just like a simple um, biography of how Mary Shelley uh, came up with Frankenstein, and I had to pick it up because I really love Mary Shelley, and Frankenstein is one of my favorite classics, so had to pick it up. And then I picked up The Art of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I love that movie. It was basically animation porn. I was so happy that it won the Hugo Award for, like, uh, best uh, long feature. And I've been wanting this art book for so long. It goes into detail about the concept art, the animation techniques used, and there's just a lot to take in in this book. It goes into, like, the sceneries, and, like, uh, character designs, and, yeah. This is the type of coffee table books that I live for. I love collecting art books, and whenever I see a good art book that is both inspiring and inspires me to create my own art and informative, I will pick it up. Okay, and now moving on to like some random stuff that I got in and around the con. As you can see, there are a lot of books that I got. First up, uh, Shadow Sent by P.M. Freestone. This author was in the Conlang panel about invented languages, and she talked about uh, basing the Conlang in this book uh, in like ancient Aramaic and working together with a linguist to kind of um, get that feel for the language and also for the culture and uh, how the culture views like sense because scent is currency in that in the culture of this book and uh, she made the book sound so interesting that when I saw this at a bookstore I was like okay I actually want to buy and read this, and it's like recently come out in the UK, and I can't wait to pick it up. Hopefully 
this year I might actually like pick it up already because it sounds really intriguing and I am a language nerd so you know anything to do with invented languages and non-invented languages I'm all for that. Then I got The Fairy's Tale by F.D. Lee. Uh, this is a standalone but also like book one in uh, currently a trilogy and it is self-published and like independent, um, uh, independently published and it's basically a uh, like a Cinderella retelling but in this like in this story the uh the main character wants to be a godmother and she apparently wants to be a fairy godmother and all of that how how that turns about and i this was super cheap it was like eight euros you could have gotten this for free by subscribing to a newsletter so you could have gotten an e-copy but i wanted a physical copy because you know i just want to support it's a floppy paperback and I wanted to support the author because this sounds really interesting. Um, it's supposed to have like a lot of feminist themes which I'm eagerly looking forward to how that turns out and also I'm very familiar with various versions of Cinderella so I'm interested to see how uh, the author will tackle a story that is very um, very familiar and very like popular and how they will deal with various themes so yeah looking forward to this as well then i got the last children of tokyo by yoko tawada this is a very short book but it's so gorgeous i love this cover i love the french flaps and it's by a female author and it is about a sort of dystopian future uh, where a sort of like dramatic change in environment has caused children to be born very sickly and the adults that have been born before the uh, huge climate altering event they live very long lives and their children and grandchildren are dying very young and this is basically about our grandfather taking care of uh, their child uh, or their grandchild and like looking back and looking into the future about what the what the world is gonna do and how things are developing and all that so really looking forward to this one then i got the day of the triffids by john windham uh, i've seen uh, caitlin from kitty g read and really like it. I've seen Maya from Maya Reads read and not like it that much and it's also Sam from Sarcasm and Sci-Fi one of her favorite books. So I feel like there's like a contingency of super favorite like good and like eh. So I, I feel like I'm intrigued about what this is and this is like super classic science fiction and I love these covers. These covers are everything to me. So it was cheap because, let me tell you, uh, the sales tax in Ireland is so small compared to Finland so that every single book, even the ones I could get in Finland, were like many euros cheaper than they are uh, at ho back home. So I was like just like putting money wherever because I was like all of these are so like affordable so yeah had to get this then I got uh, to be taught if fortunate by Becky Chambers uh, Be I really adore Becky Chambers' work I want to support her and uh, this is such a beautiful little novella I can't wait to read it and pretty much everyone in our group bought this so you know uh, had to be a sheep and be a part of that but in all honesty I was going to buy this well like this was one of the only books that I had actually like planned to purchase before going abroad then I got Rosewater Insurrection by Tade Thompson I have read Rosewater and I really enjoyed it and 
I don't actually have my own copy. At some point I might buy it. Uh, I know it sounds a little ridiculous that I bought the second one and I don't own the first one, but I have read the first one, so I don't have like that um, pressure to buy the first one yet. Um, but I want to continue on with the series and I also want to read it at my own pace, so that's why I wanted my own copy instead of like uh, getting it from the library. And I hear that this focuses on another point of view character and not the one from Rosewater, because that was the one thing that I was like so annoyed with, uh, with Rosewater was the main character was so obnoxious, but this apparently follows uh, uh, a female point of view and I'm like all, all for that. And yeah, can't wait to read this. I am so looking forward to one, like seeing what happens with the alien spores. Then I got Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I've been wanting to read this uh, ever since uh, Elizabeth from Books and Pieces talked about it. And uh, Justine from I Should Read That has also spoken very highly of it. And uh, it has spiderlings. It has sentient spider beings. And it sounds really interesting and I want it. Uh, but currently you can't really get this in Finland. I'm, like You can't get it from the library, I think. But you can't buy this, because Children of Ruin came out, and now the bookstores are filled with Children of Ruin. And I'm like, but why would I want to read Children of Ruin before reading Children of Time? It's a sequel. So I saw this uh, for very cheap. Uh, I think this costs about 1690, uh, 1690 euros in Finland, and I paid 11 euros for this. So you can see the savings coming into play again. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Then from the Angry Robot booth, I got these two books, uh, Moonshine by Jasmine Gower and The Sisters Mederos by Patrice Sarath. And these are both like historical fiction, fantasy, fantasy of manners type stories. And you can get these in Finland uh, for like twelve ninety a piece, but Angry Robot Books was actually offering a deal at the convention where you could buy two books for twelve euros. So I was like, ha, ah, thank you, I I shall. And especially Moonshine uh, got my interest because Jasmine Gower was in the making asexual textual panel, and uh, they discussed about being aromantic and asexual and how that plays in their work and how they deal with representing asexual characters in a setting that is like olden timey where they don't have the vocabulary to address asexuality. So I really wanted to pick her book up because of that. So yeah. And then for the rest of my books that I got from chapters, I got The Onion Girl by Charles De Lint, and Kelsey from The Fancy Hat Lady Reads has raved about this, and that is why I ended up buying it. This was like $3.99, and it's in very good condition. Mm, love that old book smell. And it just sounds really intriguing. Um, in novel after novel and story after story, Charles de Lind has brought an entire imaginary North American city to vivid life. At the center of all the entwined lives of Newford stands a young artist named Jilly Coppercorn. With her tangled hair, her paint splattered jeans, a smile perpetually on her lips. Jilly, whose paintings capture the hidden beings that dwell in the city's shadows. Now at last de Lind tells Jilly's own story, for behind the painter's fey charm lies a dark secret and a past she's labored to forget and that past is coming to claim her now. It sounds really interesting, like it's both like a contemporary and a sort of fairy tale. So yeah, sounds really intriguing. Then I got Luna New Moon by Ian MacDonald. Ian MacDonald was one of the guests of honor in Worldcon and I went to see his panel Horticulture in Extreme Environments and he sounded like an extremely funny guy, and 
I basically, after listening to him talk about an hour about his glorious fig trees and climate change and intersectional apocalypse, I decided that I wanted to read something by him. And Rachel from Kalanadi uh, really liked this book, and I think also Bree from Bree Reads Books really liked this. And the hard hardcover was uh, $6.99 a chapter, so I was like, <laughs> gee. You, you, you are sensing a theme, I think, during this haul. Like, I was just amazed by all of the deals, and I just bought everything. And in that same vein, I found The War by B. Catling. This is a naked hardcover edition with these gorgeous end papers, and I've never seen a hardcover edition of The War. And Thomas from SFF 180 has talked about it, and James from James Chatham also really liked it. So, you know, it was like 9 euros for the hardcover, so I got it. Um, apparently it's like um, a colonial story? Let's see. Outside the colonial town of Essenwald lies the war, a vast, perhaps endless forest. Sentient and magical, a place of demons and angels, of warriors and priests, the war bends time and wipes memory. A sentient forest? Now a renegade foreign soldier intends to be the first human to traverse its expanse. Armed with only a bow, he begins his journey. But some fear the consequences of his mission, so a native marksman is chosen to stop him. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Adversaries, cast of characters, curious young girl, a cyclops raised by robots. Fact and fiction blend, but but it has a sentient magical forest. I'm in. Why did no one tell me about the sentient magical forest? Okay, so the next stack of books. Yes, this is still going on. This haul is still going on. Uh, the next stack of books is um, books that I got signed. So first up is this uh, Come Late to the Love of Birds by Sandra Kasturi. Uh, she is an Estonian author and this was um, from this uh, small press, Titro Press. And they publish a lot of like horror and mostly horror. And these are like fairy tale inspired poems. And I was like really intrigued and the cover looks amazing. And we got to talking and she said that she's from Estonia. And I was like, well, I'm from Finland. So she signed it for me and uh, uh, left me a note in, in Estonian uh, wishing me happy reading. And that's exciting. Then on the last day I got Joe Walton Starlings uh, and it was already signed by the author. But Andrea from Infinite Text actually has a blurb in this uh, book. So I got Andrea to, ch to sign the blurb and I was like, well, you know, like, why not? And like... Andrea is such a well-rounded reader and so analytical, and so if, if she likes a thing, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I will like a thing as well. Also, it's been blurbed by Robin Hobb. So uh, that's an endorsement if, not, if like you ever saw one. Then I got American Hippo by Sarah Gailey. This is the omnibus that collects both of the novellas, uh, River of Teeth and um, Bone of Marrow, I want to say. Anyway, both of the um, hippo cowboy stories. And I've only read the first one, but I saw this omnibus and I wanted to get it because I like the first one and I want to read the rest. And this also has like a couple extra short stories in it. And uh, Sarah Gailey had a signing. So I went and got the book signed as well. So now it's personalized and I have a fond memory of 
WorldConf. And these next two books are kind of in a way in that they're, they're SFF, but they also are kind of in that literary fiction field, so they're genre benders. First I got Octavia E. Butler's Kindred. Uh, this is like a classic if you ever saw one. And uh, I've been wanting to read something by Butler ever since, well, Thomas has been talking about him, talking about her, Elizabeth from Books and Pieces has been talking about her, but also uh, N. Jerry from Onyx Pages has talked highly of various uh, black authors, including Butler, so can't wait to read this one. This is basically about a modern black woman time traveling, accidentally time traveling into a time when there is still slavery in the United States and it's about how she deals with uh, the sudden change in her uh, in her situation. And the next one I got is All the Bad Apples by Moira Fowley Doyle. Moira Fowley Doyle is an Irish author and it seemed appropriate to get a book written by an Irish, Irish author in Ireland. And this cover, man, this cover is everything. And it is basically about like witches, like the, the blurb is like, our family tree is full of bad apples. You know the kind, the ones who don't follow the rules, the ones who dress differently, think differently, love differently. The curse of the bad apples has claimed my sister and now it's coming for me. It sounds... <laughs> Sounds spooky. I think I will save this for October. I mean, look at the back. It has like spider webs and like rotten apples and skulls and like arsenic. Sounds amazing. I think this is an October read if, if I ever saw one. Okay, so those were all of the books from Worldcon and Dublin. But post World Gone Blues hit me hard, so I had to go and buy some more books to help alleviate that homesickness, that 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 feeling of longing when you want to be back with your all the friends, and you just have to make yourself happy by buying more shit. So let's go. I'm just gonna quickly go through this. First, I got the Finnish copy of The Hobbit. Um, I love the Finnish editions of The Hobbit. They are translated by Kersti Juva, who is a linguistic genius. Uh, there is a reason why she teaches about translating and um, why she gets called to translate all of the uh, Lord of the Rings stuff. Uh, she has a perfect grasp of the Finnish language, and I feel like in modern translations, some of the translators like don't have, they are not as fluent in Finnish as I would like. So got this one, really eager to read it at some point. Then I got Tea from an Empty Cup by Pat Cadigan. And uh, this is sort of like Asian inspired that ancient Zen riddle holds the key to a baffling mystery, a young man found with his throat slashed while locked alone in a virtual reality parlor. The secret of this enigmatic death lies in, a, in an apocalyptic cyberspace shadow world where nothing is certain and even one's own identity can change in an instant. So it's like an identity bending virtual reality cyberpunk possibly dystopia, sort of Blade Runner-esque. Ah, really looking forward to reading this. Then I got uh, The Chrysalids by John Windham. These were all from a second-hand bookstore in Helsinki, by the way. And uh, this was just three euros, so had to pick it up. Sometimes I wonder if I'm actually like rebuying Maya's books that Maya, has, Maya from Maya Reads has brought to that same bookstore. And then I just go and see that there are books that I want to read and they turn out to be Maya's. Maya, if you see this video, is this book yours? <laughs> because I bought it. But yeah, another um, classic science fiction. And this is all about like 
people living in a world where deformity is like really looked down upon and like people who are born with various deformities are deemed like evil and they are basically culled and it is about these children who all are hiding um, some physical alteration in their bodies and then they end up like forming a sort of like telepathic link that's what I heard that this is so looking forward to this as well and then I got some manga first I got uh, the skull face bookseller Honda-san by Honda-san and uh, this I, I made a whole video about the anime which I will link in the cards uh, the anime is fantastic and I wanted the manga because I feel like the manga will have like I will have more time to read through the various info dumps that were present in the anime as well but you know you you are so focused in the animation and the action happening that you are, aren't always like having time to read all the subtitles and such so um, I'm really looking forward to reading this one and uh, yeah I this is also a very short series, so like I, I don't mind collecting it. And then I got Cocoon Entwined by Yuriko Hara. And uh, this is weird. It's basically about this girls' academy, where the girls are, you know, keeping their hair super long and they're growing their hair to make school uniforms out of that hair huh and then also female female romance so uh i haven't i have never heard of this but i just you know it looks super like nostalgic like if you've ever seen the anime maria samagamiteru which is all about these girls being in a sort of Catholic all-girls school and having crushes on the upperclassmen. This reminds me of that. So yeah, I picked it up on a whim because it looks pretty, dare I say, sexy? Like, I'm looking forward to this. And there you have it, finally. That was my entire book haul. And all of the knickknacks and stuff that I got, like, all of it. This is it. I spent a lot of money, but I feel like it's all going to a good place. This is why I didn't buy any books for the majority of the year. Because I was saving for Worldcon. And you know what? I'm not even trying to do the whole lifting the books up. Because, you know, that's just, that's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna break something. So yeah, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And please tell me in the comments, which of these books would you like to see me prioritize for reading and getting my thoughts out? I might even be tempted to do a reading vlog focusing on like some of these books. So yeah, please let me know in the comments. And I will see you in another video very soon. Bye-bye!